On the 20th of August 2019, Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari ordered the partial closure on land borders to curb illegal trade and smuggling from neighboring countries. On this episode of Community Forum, we're going to be looking at the activities at the border and how the closure is affecting neighboring communities. This is Community Forum. I am Sarah Yeku. Stay with us. Days upon days, months upon months, and it now seems that an end to the border closure is not near. Border communities are feeling the impacts the most as many people engage in cross-border businesses. In search of answers, Community Forum visited the Vespa market in Ijaniki, Lagos. It is regarded as the biggest second-hand market in the commercial nerve center of Nigeria. Many traders rely heavily on goods from Benin Republic, but it has not been business as usual for many of the traders. Izimba is a father of three. He sells curtains, bed sheets, and towels at Vespa Market. But he says the border closure has slowed down activities at the market. For the closure of the border, we used to bring our loads through this road. But since the border has closed, there's no access again to buy goods. That's why if you can see my shop now, it's somehow scanty because I have not bought anything from since then from Cotton. But I also affected those who normally come to buy from us. Because when they come, they will not see new markets, new goods again to buy. They will go back empty handed. We the lower people were suffering because of the closure. Because we don't have that access like other big women that are there. So if you don't sell, you can't see money to buy food and eat. Some of us we go to Lome. And some of us Ghana to buy. But now the border is closed, we cannot go there and buy. People that are bringing the market from north, because they say that north side, the, the, the border is open. So they are carrying the market from northern side before the market come in. So when the market come now, the price is so high that workers cannot even afford to buy. They close the border, but they're still penetrating to our, into, into this country. And we don't have another thing, or we don't know another thing to do than what we are doing here now. So it's affecting us. How are we going to take care of our children? Sometimes people pass through bush. And sometimes we hear that they rape, they wound people, they beat hell out of women because of to go and buy the, so the fear. For two months, nobody have the labor to go against. We set out on a journey to the Seme border through the coastal road between Badagri and Kotonu. A journey of about 51 kilometers. Communities at the Seme border are bearing the brunt of disclosure the most. Bengbo is a border community in front of the Seme border gate. Its traditional ruler supports the border closure to some extent. <laughs> Agreement Meantime, 
want to go. Kini Nigeria anga revenue ukoni. Nigeria and the Republic of Benin are dotted by ocean fronts, and these fence demarcates both countries. We didn't notice the presence of any security operative here. Persons were seen strolling in and out of both countries. We also see canoes from a far distance. Residents of Bengbo community tell us that smugglers continue their activities without hindrance at midnight. We told you, close, you close. Ibo de on rise, it tumba ta on kosto mumu. Ibo de on toki ingba kono tumu. When they close, brother, we load rise in me, on go jumi. We load toki me, on go jumi. We load kata afe, on go jumi belu. Awo kono ali ekbe mimi bayi, dia benem. We are some meters away from the summer border. It's usually bustling with activities before the border closure. But there is a quietness that envelops the whole area. It is now scanty, devoid of the vehicular and human traffic. A dark lonely road to the border, save from a few lights from cars and the frequent flickering light from the torch of security officials at checkpoints. The border area is illuminated. We see a stream of heads. People are waiting for the 6 a.m. mark, the official time for opening the border for those who want to leave the country and those who want to come in. On the dot of six, the border was open to human and vehicular traffic. <laughs> Officials of the Immigration Service and Customs Service have their hands full every morning checking documents and luggage. Pedestrians were allowed in after displaying proper documents and identification. According to immigration officials, everyone needs to get their luggage checked before entry. We entered the joint border post of the Nigerian and Bene government. The Semekraki border, one of the busiest boundary lines, not only in West Africa, but the whole continent. Where we stand, the horrid smell of rotten food items hits us. Hundreds upon hundreds of trucks, carrying perishable and non-perishable goods, stranded at the park, waiting for clearance. These consignment of goods have been trapped at the Semekraki border for months, and there is no hope that they will be cleared anytime soon. Passengers in commercial buses also have to be checked. This is the Semekrake border, an entry point for those who are coming from the Republic of Benin to Nigeria to make sales, to do their trade, and it's also an exit point for those who wish to leave Nigeria. 
Movement along the Samakraki border is more relaxed. Just like the Nigerian side, there are a lot of trucks stranded at the park waiting for clearance. By the border, we get to fill up for the journey to Kotonu. Fuel is now scarce in the Republic of Benin as the country largely depends on the smuggling of cheap fuel from Nigeria. Our guide tells us that the closure has affected the cost of transportation in the country. Now the close border, you know they see petrol, you know they see fuel by fuel cost. One liter now is 500 CFA. Now we will buy one liter. No any way we pass enter Nigeria now. If he say he pass goods now, then we'll beat you. Everything is not cost for them. To see petrol by now. Go waka waka tire. Open border. Then we go see small small something by to eat. We know they eat self to eat now in our hala. We didn't notice any bustling activity at the warehouse at the right side of the road. Those who manage to get fuel stay at the roadside waiting for customers. We see huge glass bottles of fuel sold for 500 sephers per litre, equivalent to about 300 naira. Welcome to Kotonu, Benes capital, its large port city and its economic centre. Dantokpa is undoubtedly the largest open-air market in West Africa. From here, many goods crisscross borders. It is always busy, but this time, things are different. Traders here are also feeling the impact of the closure. Nigerian <laughs> But Ayasin, a market leader who sells jewelries, sees the issue from a different perspective. If we take uh, the population, the eff effect of uh, that uh, border closing, uh, on our population is negative. But if you want to find the reason that uh, bring Nigeria government to close the border, it's a positive because we are in ECOWAS. Normally, any businessman from Nigeria can go everywhere in West Africa, make his business. That is not uh, the, the case with uh, our country because some Nigeria company that working here close it's not good because you see Globe Mobile it close a Diamond Bank it close and uh, Dangote is not uh, able to sell his cement in our country it's not normal but by the same time our people are taking rice import from China, Japan, Thailand, go Nigeria sell. And uh, uh, I heard, I hear say every uh, our country is the first all over the world, the first importer of uh, rice in all over the world. But we are only 10 million. Nigeria 200 million. Then all the rice we import from China, Thailand, and Japan go to Nigeria. 
by the same time, we are not agreeing to Nigeria businessmen to come make their business easily in our country. It's not normal. We have to be sincere with ourselves. Activities between the neighboring countries, and the only thing they long for is to see the border opened. Residents of Idiroko and Igolo in the Republic of Bene are separated by just the border gates. The traders say the closure is affecting their businesses as their major customers are from Bene Republic. They noted that the residents of Igolo area of Bene Republic depend on Nigeria to get palm oil, fufu, gari and water. All these, their regret is on old now while hardship has become their lot. They prefer our water here than theirs. Uh, water here seems to be cheaper than theirs. Some of them are coming to buy our goods, our Nigeria goods to their place. Because of the closed border, no means to come out again. So we are begging government to help us, to help us because of our children. Taxi drivers around here are now practically jobless. They used to ferry goods through the communities. If you have anything looting, let us red oil. We call it two bags of red oil. Police, uh, custom, immigration, you will still talk about this red oil. But smuggling activities still go on through a number of illegal routes here. It is so porous that some goods still manage to come into the country. While at the border, a vehicle of the Nigeria Customs Service was seen conveying some bags of rice seized from suspected smugglers into their office. Officials of the Nigeria Customs Service here have their hands full as they fulfill their mandate of curbing smuggling. It is a new day and we set out to one of the popular borders linking Nigeria and Niger Republic from the state capital Katsina. There are many checkpoints mounted on the highway leading into Ijibia, the border community which is a stone throw from Niger Republic. The roads are busy as it is rush hour as commuters move along. We have a problem. Problem is, and in our problem is you can't even take a, a, a bag of fertilizer to that place. We are the same community, we are the same family. That's why, even now we are on the same ground. So that's why we don't want to see something that will come and separate us. But the border post is deserted. There is no movement. Everything is still devoid of the usual activities. While there is a semblance of peace at the border, residents tell us that goods from Niger Republic still come in despite the clampdown, some of which we saw at the customs border station, Magama, Jibia. Bags of rice, bills of second-hand clothing, and kegs of vegetable oil. The smugglers have devised other means to stay in business. A source told TVC News that the smugglers now ferry the contraband goods through the longer and secret routes to get their goods to their buyers. Some of the drivers charge as much as 3,000 naira per bag of rice to be carried from Jibia to Katsina. We came through the bushes and we are taking bikes to go back through the same routes. We are aware of the border closure, but we use the back doors closure. People don't know why it was resorted to, but we are suspicious that there may be other motive other than smuggling. We left the border post in search of one of the illegal routes that smugglers ply. There are more than 50 villages at the border linking Niger Republic. We traveled through these villages, leaving trails of dust behind. Off the highway is this illegal route, a sandy stretch away from prying eyes. The tire tracks in the sands are still fresh. The area looks more like a desert, and we can only notice weeds all around. We notice bags of rice are stacked on a motorcycle in the village. From a distance, 
our sharp lens caught the movement of trucks conveying goods from Niger Republic to Nigeria. Border between Nigeria and the Republic of Niger, specifically in Daga village, which uh, is just a stone throw to Rico village into Niger. We are right here in the middle of the border between the two countries. And um, this is one of the points of concern, especially to the Nigerian government, where the porous nature of such borders is so alarming. The porous nature of the border has given advantage to the smugglers, despite the total border closure by the federal government, to signal to its neighbors that full border protocols must return before anything crosses the border. For the people, they want the government to increase incentives on agriculture and sensitize Nigerians on the need to patronize made-in-Nigeria goods so that local industries can thrive.